Hampshire's Division 1 future looks doubtful as they were skittled at Edgbaston. After day one of their game in Birmingham was washed out, the home side would have hoped for slightly better luck on the morning of day two, but they got off to the worst possible start. First Banks run out for one. And then Trop departed without scoring, courtesy of Abbott, leaving the relegated side one for two. Things got even better for relegation threatened Hampshire moments later. Bell fell for the same score as his former England teammate, Abbott Bowlingham. The hosts were four down within the first hour. Edwards, who's been in good form as of late, bowling Lamb for just six. Edwards wasn't done there though. He castled the new man in Ambrose for just six moments later. That meant a long batting session was needed from Sibley if Warwickshire were to regain any respectability with their score. Some careful but assured batting took Sibley to his third 50 of the season just before lunch hitting seven boundaries in the process. The Bears reached lunch without losing further wickets, 79 for 5 the score. When play resumed, Sibley continued to lose partners at an alarming rate. Thompson the next to go, offering a catch to Vince off Berg's bowling for 26. Patel could only add 14 to his team's total before Dawson had him caught by Holland leaving Hampshire three wickets away from wrapping up the innings. A win for the South Coast side would guarantee their Division 1 status for another season and they gave themselves the best possible chance by mopping up the tail. Wright picked up the pace slightly for the home side but when he feathered one to Allsop off Edwards on 26 he had to go, bringing in Hannon Dolby but he couldn't muster more than four, delaying the tea interval. Edwards was in the mood and he turned the extra time to his advantage, ending the Warwickshire innings by bowling side bottom. The host's total looked under par, 188 all out, but it could have been a whole lot worse. When Hampshire's openers returned to the field, few in the ground would have expected what was to come next, as Alsop only managed three before side bottom trapped him in front. Things became even worse for Hampshire moments later. With only eight on the scoreboard, Adams was bowled by side bottom for three. Due to results elsewhere, a draw is all Hampshire needed at the start of their innings, but their game plan was unravelling quickly. Vince the next to go cheaply, Wright trapping him in front for four. Hampshire three down for 13. The quick wickets could have rattled Hampshire, but what followed was a period of consolidation from Bailey and Irvine, who carefully took the side past 50. Before Hannon Dolby dismissed Irvine. The visiting side managed to scrape past 60 before they lost their next wicket. It was Dawson who departed to tell the bowler with just three runs to his name. Despite the quick loss of wickets, Bailey was trying his hardest at the other end to edge towards parity. He brought up his half century before Holland was trapped in front by Hannon Dolby for just one. The next man to fall was Berg, who could only add eight before that man Hannon Dolby grabbed his next scalp. The same bowler ended Bailey's resilient innings for 55 with Hampshire scraping past 100 shortly afterwards. Hampshire were in real danger of total collapse. The new man in Abbott couldn't offer anything other than a single figure score before coming down the track and seeing himself stumped. The end was nigh for Hampshire. They could only add four more runs before Patel took the final wicket, courtesy of Edwards, for a 13 run duck. Warwickshire began their reply. They didn't add any runs or lose any wickets before the close of play. They closed 72 ahead giving them a real chance of picking up a rare win to heap the pressure on their opponents. Hampshire will need to regroup if they're to keep their destiny in their own hands on day three.